Emergency Medical Minute presents Pharmacy Friday, where emergency medicine clinical pharmacists join us to shed light on pharmacological topics. The Emergency Medical Minute is excited to announce that we are now offering AMA, PRA, Category 1 credits via online course modules. To access these and for more information, visit our website at www.emergencymedicalminute.com backslash CME dash courses, or simply click on the link in our show notes and create an account. Okay, everyone. So this is Pharmacy Medical Minute. Um, I'm Cheyenne Bean. I'm the pharmacy resident for those who don't know me. Um, So tonight I'm going to talk about Bactrom Adverse Events. Um, So some of you may or may not have seen the new Meditech alert for Bactrom that's popped up, um, specifically with potential hyperkalemic agents. Um, so Bactrim, as we all know, is a sulfa antibiotic that we use for a variety of infections like UTIs, skin and soft tissue infections, COPD exacerbations. Um, Bactrim actually has two components, the trimethoprim and the sulfa methoxazole. And so when thinking about adverse effects, um, two that I really want to hit on tonight are hypoglycemia and hyperkalemia. Um, so for the hypoglycemia, the sulfa methoxazole component actually binds to receptors in your pancreas that increase insulin secretion. Um, And so in patients who are on uh, oral diabetic medication, specifically sulfonylureas like glipizide, um, gliburide, or glimepiride, you can see increased hypoglycemia when they're concurrently uh, receiving Bactrim. On the hyperkalemia side of it, um, the trimethoprim component basically blocks uh, sodium channels in the kidney, which inhibits the potassium excretion. And so when using Bactrim in combinations with agents like ACE inhibitors or ARBs or spironolactone, um, you can see patients whose potassium shoots up really high. So major takeaways um, for Bactrim adverse events. So providers... Um, When you're prescribing Bactrim for someone who's going to be discharged um, and you look over their meds, they're on oral diabetics or on ACEs, ARBs, spironolactone, it's a great idea to just make sure you have a baseline potassium and check their blood glucose before they go out. That way you kind of have a standard line of where they were. Um, And then on the opposite side, if you have a patient who comes in who's in a um, acute hypoglycemia state or hyperkalemia state um, and they tell you that they've recently started a new antibiotic it'd be a great idea to check their med list see if that new antibiotic's Bactrim and then you would have a causative agent. Any questions? Um, so I would say um, kind of anywhere outside of that upper limit of normal so above five typically um, I know specifically we had a patient who we were trying to prescribe Bactrim for a UTI to go home with and their potassium was like 5.3 at baseline and we chose not to use it in that patient because of the increased risk. Yeah, absolutely. They could check, um, you know, typically if you're going to do three days of Bactrim, five days of, five days of Bactrim, they could check in with their PCP, you know, um, in two or so days if they were going to be on a prolonged treatment, especially. Hello, EMM listeners. We are dedicated to providing you with high-quality educational content free of charge and without ads. As a nonprofit organization, We rely solely on donations. So if you enjoy our show and are able to make a one-time or recurring donation to help cover our operational costs, any amount is helpful in making this show possible. Click the link in our show notes to make a donation. Thank you.